Well, 50 years ago today, the front page of the largest circulating newspaper in Donald Trump's New York City neighborhood of Queens, in that newspaper, this was the headline. Nixon blasts false charges. Newspapers are hard to find in New York City now, but in those days, they were everywhere. And the front pages of the New York Daily News were designed to grab the eye as you rushed past multiple newsstands on the way to the subway, where there were also newsstands in the subway, and where half the people on your subway car in Queens would be reading the New York Daily News. Donald Trump had to see that headline on this day 50 years ago. He couldn't miss it. No one in New York City could miss it. That was August 16th, 1973. The president of the United States on the front page of Donald Trump's hometown newspapers claiming the accusations against him emerging in criminal investigations were all false, all of them false. And one year later, Richard Nixon resigned the presidency because those charges were true, all true. Every newspaper in the country had a version of that very headline 50 years ago today. And everyone who saw that headline, including kids in junior high school, knew that we were living through an important chapter of history. We knew we were living in the middle of history the president of the United States being investigated for possible criminal conduct. That had never happened before in history. You are now living in the middle of such history once again. And if you're in high school or college now, you'll be around 50 years from now to see the Trump headlines reappear on their 50th anniversary. 50 years from now, there will be four different dates that year that will mark a 50th anniversary of a former president of the United States being indicted. The bigger anniversaries, a year or two after that, will be the 50th anniversaries of guilty verdicts if they are reached in these four criminal prosecutions of a former president. When you are living in the middle of history, maintaining perspective is not just a constant struggle, it is often impossible. No American soldier or general knew that they were gonna be fighting World War II for four years. When it's presented in high school textbooks in its neat four-year package, World War II looks like it makes a certain sense in the flow of American history to a high school student. You can see where it fits in. 50 years ago, no one knew the president of the United States was one year away from being forced to resign the presidency and then receive a pardon for his crimes committed while he was president of the United States. That pardon is the only reason Donald Trump is the first former president of the United States to be indicted. There is no greater struggle that I personally have in these presentations at this hour every night than the struggle of perspective. For example, this indictment is now 48 hours old, and I still have not been able to do what I have been hoping to do for two nights in a row now, and that is to spend the entire hour guiding an analysis of the entire indictment. The alleged crimes of Donald Trump and the people closest to him, like Mark Meadows and Rudolph Giuliani, followed by an analysis of the alleged crimes committed by the group of indicted lawyers, an unprecedented indictment of a group of lawyers like Jeffrey Clark, John Eastman, Jenna Ellis, should also include an analysis of the alleged crimes of the indicted fake electors and the alleged criminal conspiracy to steal voting data from computers in Coffee County, Georgia. And last, and in many ways, most importantly, an analysis of the alleged crimes of witness tampering and threatening that involved the vicious lies told by Donald Trump and Rudolph Giuliani about the poll workers, Ruby Freeman and her daughter, and the cruel, and according to the indictment, criminal attempt 
by Kanye West's former publicist to terrorize Ruby Freeman. This indictment is the single most important story told in indictment form about Donald Trump or any president of the United States and Donald Trump's alleged criminal enterprise to destroy American democracy and to destroy any person in the way of his criminal enterprise. One of our first guests tonight in an opinion piece for The New York Times has called this indictment ingenious. If you have not yet read this indictment, you do deserve a full page-by-page -page analysis of it on this program. But the flow of news about this indictment will not yet allow us to slow down and turn each page of this indictment for you. And so we will continue to be quoting it selectively. And I will always be struggling to find the right perspective on this indictment and the stories around it. But I just wanted to acknowledge at the outset this evening that history is now moving too fast for a mere news program to be able to hold it in place for an hour. Tonight, a federal judge in Atlanta responded in less than 24 hours to defendant Mark Meadows' motion to move Fulton County District Attorney Fawny Willis's criminal case against him from the Fulton County courthouse to federal court. Donald Trump and other defendants are expected to make similar motions. Federal Judge Stephen C. Jones, who was appointed by President Obama, ordered a hearing on that question in his federal courtroom in Atlanta a week from Monday on August 28th at 10 a.m. The judge gave District Attorney Willis a deadline of next Wednesday, August 23rd, for submitting a written brief arguing against moving the case to federal court. Today, District Attorney Willis filed a motion with the Georgia state judge currently in charge of the case, proposing that the arraignment of the defendants shall take place the week of September 5th. The motion also proposes dates for the discovery process and pretrial motions to be filed. The last line of the motion proposes a trial date of March 4th of next year.